The government just made it a lot harder to get an immigration appointment. Stand by and I'm going to tell you all about it. Until now, if you wanted to make an appointment to go down to the USCIS and talk to a live person about your pending immigration case, you could go online to a system called InfoPass, find an appointment that suits you, make that appointment, go down there, speak face to face to somebody about your case. It's a great system, not perfect, but it's been useful. One big complaint was appointment dates sometimes were two weeks out, possibly longer depending on your location and, and when you were making the appointment. However, recently the CIS has changed that and done away the entire InfoPass appointment system and change it to what they're calling InfoMod. With InfoMod, you will not be able to make your own appointment. You're going to have to jump through some hoops to get an appointment if they'll even allow you to have an appointment. And I'll, I'll detail that more in a minute. But first, I'll go back and tell you the reason this has been changed. Because of the easy availability of appointments, a lot of people made appointments, right? It makes sense. I've got a problem with my case. I don't know what's going on. I make an info pass appointment, I go down there, I talk to somebody and I get an answer. Maybe satisfactory, maybe not, but at least I looked face to face with a live person, expressed my concerns, my worries, and I got some feedback. And in the past, we here at Rapavisa have recommended that exact thing. When, when everything else failed, make an info pass appointment, see if you can get your case moving. And we have found that it does work uh, in getting cases moving along or getting answers that you're not getting from the regular contact support number at USCIS. However, USCIS claims that 70 to 80% of the people who are making these info pass appointments we're making them to ask questions that they could have answered themselves online. For example, timelines, how long is my case going to take, and so on. And they're right. A lot of information is available online, and you can go enter your case number. Uh, you can find a lot of great information on the website. Or maybe the answer they want is not there, or at least they couldn't find it after some effort. And so for those people, making an appointment was a good option. So the CIS is saying 70-80% of the people who made an info pass appointment made it for reasons that didn't really require that appointment. In other words, they could have got that information another way. Additionally, they say about 20 to 25% of people who made an info pass appointment never showed up and this, you know, wasted their time. They have people available waiting, you don't show up. But the CIS decided that their answer to this problem would be to significantly curtail your ability to make an appointment. So what they've done, instead of now going online, make your appointment, go in, see someone face to face, get some answers, express your concerns. Instead of that process, now what happens is, you call a contact center number. Now these people get 400,000 calls a month at the contact center. So you call there, you're not calling and talking to somebody right away. We've all been through th these busy call centers. We know how that works. And then I'm gonna get their IVR. Now that, we've all experienced those. That's these machines that try to do everything they can to keep you from getting to a live person. So you get past that. Now we get to the, what they call the tier one agent. Now the tier one agent is not a government employee. This is a contractor. Tier one. Now I've, I've called, I've, I've managed to get to a live person, which in itself requires some gymnastics. And now I've got a live center a live tier one call center person, not a federal employee, but okay, I'll start with this. So now I express my concern and uh, they'll try to answer it. If I'm going to ask about timelines, uh, you know, when can I expect an answer in my case, so on. They, they do, uh, they are able to handle some the basic level questions. But if your intent is to get an appointment, you're fed up or whatever reason, you want to sit and talk to a live person, you've got to get past the gatekeeper, which is tier, the uh, tier one guy. He, he or she cannot make an appointment for you. So you ask for tier two. They're required by policy to give you tier two. They'll try to resist it. Once you get past that and you insist that you need to, you want to talk to tier two, and by policy, they're supposed to not deny that request, whether they think it's justified or not. Now the tier two, at tier two, they are the people who uh, can make an appointment for you. What tier two is going to do is they're going to call you back. They're going to commit to uh, having a tier two person call you back, they say within 24 to 48 hours. If you're not available, they're going to try again. If you miss the second call, that's it. They're done. They're only going to make two attempts. They don't indicate how long they'll let the phone ring, and they don't even tell you what time of day they're going to call. What's effectively happened here is that the CIS recognized a problem. They said, we've got a 24, 25% no-show, and then of the people that do show up, 70 to 80% of them are asking 
uh, things that could have easily been located online. There are a lot of ways that this probably could have been approached, but their decision was, let's make it harder to get an appointment. If we make it harder to get an appointment, we will have less appointments. What you can do, well, the only thing you can do, unfortunately, is play their game. But to help you, you want to, when you get that tier one person, you just want to insist on tier two. Uh, if you're having trouble getting tier two, ask for a supervisor. They are required by policy to give you tier two if you ask for it, and they're also required by policy to give you a supervisor. Last year, the CIS said it processed eight million requests, eight million petition requests. They will have, by the end of the year, 800 call center people. That's 10,000 requests per call center agent. So we have one person, one person to represent every 10,000 requests. That's a crazy, ridiculous number. Only in the government, only in a monopoly would you see something like that. It, to give you an example with Rapid Visa, our ratio is about 240, meaning we have one person available answering the phone for every 240 customers that we have. We're stuck with this system. A cynical person might say that we're putting up roadblocks and making it hard as possible to immigrate. The CIS contact center call center has never been incredibly useful. It's now got even less useful. The outlet we used to have was at least at the end of the day, if that didn't work, we can make an info pass appointment, talk to a live person. Might not solve our problem, but at least we had that gratification of looking at a fellow human being in the eye and expressing our problem and our concern and, and our questions. Now they, to a significant degree, have taken that away or at least made it significantly harder to get that service. If you found this video useful, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit the like button and comment below to let us know what you think. You can also ask your own immigration questions in the comments below. If you want to make sure not to miss any of our future videos, we invite you to subscribe here on YouTube and be sure to click the notification icon so you can be alerted whenever we publish a new video. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook where you can watch our regular immigration Q&A live streams. 